on today's Smart Robots Review, we're looking at NASA's Swarmy Robots. And what are Swarmy Robots? They're so curious looking. And how are they going to aid in our space exploration? Well, stay with me and we'll find out more. Welcome to Smart Robots Review. Welcome back to Smart Robots Review, the show that reviews robotics and other fantastic tech from around the world. I'm your host Elias and it's great to have you here as always. During my trip at Cape Canaveral, Florida, NASA's Kennedy Space Center, I had the opportunity to talk to one of the lead robotic engineers from NASA's Swampworks, a very special team that develops future exploration space tech. And this guy was awesome. He had a lot of great information. On the previous episode, we got to hear him talk about the prospecting free flyer on this episode we're going to talk about swarmies what are swarmies they're very special smaller robots that work together in teams and packs simply equipped and their task is simple to identify locate and collect resources ahead of potentially a space exploration mission by man by humans so i have more on that information let's get started with the interview but first a message from my awesome sponsor JLC PCB. This video is sponsored by JLC PCB, where you can prototype and order professional high precision PCBs online from only $2. JLC PCB boards are widely applied to aerospace, industry, smart robot, medical device fields, and also do it yourself projects for engineers, makers, and hobbyists. So check them out below jlcpcb.com. $2 for 10 PCBs. This is a great company, and thank you for sponsoring this video. So here we are with a sampling of your swarm bots. So right. In their home base. Can you talk about this it? One we know they don't yeah. Um, the so the, the swarmies um, is this idea this that um, we need to go find resources, well, so and we're gonna go. How do we find those resources? And if you've got one single rover driving around, just searching and looking for resources, how efficient is that? And so this was this idea that we could make a lot of low-cost small vehicles to go out and we could bring lots of them and they spread out and they go look for resources and help and, and, and then potentially also excavate and mine resources for NASA missions. And so we needed some help with that. So what we actually did is we developed a very cheap Earth-based uh, uh, prototype that we're, we, um, that it wasn't just NASA, it was actually a collaboration with, with, uh, with the University of Mexico. And, um, and so it was a great collaboration where they developed um, these low cost uh, uh, swarmies and um, we, were, we helped create this competition called the NASA Swarmathon. And so we're using these, these little simple prototypes to come up with algorithms to, to prove how that swarming would work. How would clo uh, ro robots collaboratively, collaboratively uh, drive around and, um, and talk to each other and um, actually find resources? And this, this builds off of work that New Mexico, uh, New Mexico, New Mexico had done, where um, they, they, they were inspired by ants, and how do ants go out and search for resources and things like that. And so this, this, this competition that is a collegiate competition with NASA is, is kind of a build on that, and trying to, trying to understand better how those kind of things could work. And a recruiting tool, from what I hear. Right, and, and actually this is not the only competition that we actually do. We actually have the, uh, the um, we have a, uh, a mining competition that actually I think is happening like uh, two months from now or a month from now, and um, it takes the next step. So this is prospecting and looking for resources. Um, the and it, the other one is actually an excavation uh, 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 competition where we actually have uh, universities come in with excavation robots and they're supposed to mine a certain amount and collect it and dump it into a bin and team that collects the most wins um, and they also are doing autonomy and, and uh, um, uh, other things as part of the competition as well so between this competition and the competition we actually have some really great uh, opportunities for students to get plugged in and NASA like you said also can find new students and recruit is but but also we benefit from the technology that can be created in, in, in these uh, competitions makes sense so all right, so what are we looking here? We have some ultrasonic sensors, right? Yep, and so we, we can use those for uh, 
uh, lo locating obstacles and the obstacle avoidance. We have a IMU, an inertial measurement unit here that can you know see the the position of the robot and also. Uh, uh, tracks of the We also have a uh, GPS, okay. um, and then we have the main brain. Um, it's an Intel NUC, uh, computer that we can that the students can load their different algorithms on and do their their testing. Um, we also have you know the different wheels and uh, drive pods, and uh, we also have our gripper. So. Um, do you have Arduino driving the motors? Um, we have Arduino driving the motors as well as driving a little server on the gripper um, and that plugs back into the main computer. Um, we also have the webcam um, and the webcam is using the competition to find these QR codes. And so the, the, the QR codes, um, the April tags or whatever you want to call them, they're, they're uh, used for um, as, as, as mimicking a, a resource and so we have these all over the, the area and they have to go out and actually pick them up with the gripper. And, and the camera and, looks at the barcode and, 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 and then it identifies it, it as a resource. That makes so, it easy. Yeah. All right, so have you thought about, so I've, I've reviewed a whole bunch of different robotic vacuums. Now, okay, lower tech, right? But, but uh, the one thing I learned about them is they try, some of them try to add more redundancy. Like I, I tested one that had LiDAR on it. Mm -hmm. So it's using, actually it's using bumper sensors, it's using uh, ultrasonic, uh, infrared, and LiDAR. I'm like, wow, that's really yeah. great. So have you thought about adding LiDAR to these guys? Yeah, I, I think that in, there has been some cheaper lidars that have come out over the years, but a lot of it, a lot of times that is kind of the cost is the issue with lidar. Yeah. Um, lidar is a technology that you would have when you're doing um, a lot of heavy autonomy, um, and it is something that's used a lot in in, in the full autonomy. Um, usually, it's a big sensor suite of multiple instruments that all get combined together. Um, you know. Uh, there's even there's lidar, there's stereo vision cameras, there's uh, um, radar, all kinds of different things, and most of the, those sensors give you almost the same data. You know, right. it's the idea of a 3D point cloud. Some of them excel at certain things in different environments and lighting conditions and, and, and other stuff. So it's kind of a balance between what you need and what's required for that vehicle. Um, on these, we try to keep the cost as low as possible, um, just because we have to build and we have to build so many of them for the competition. Um, and in the idea of a swarm, that is kind of the idea with these, is that each one doesn't really have to be that smart, right? I mean, if you've got a proper search algorithm, each rover kind of can go off kind of dumb and find uh, resources kind of on their own. And because of the, the swarm, they're smarter together, right? Whereas one vehicle that has to do the same kind of thing might have to have a lot more sophisticated sensors um, because it's only one and it's only kind of out there on its own. Um, so you kind of crowdsource with these guys. So you, I think the idea would be to get have less um, less complicated sensors. That makes sense. All right, so is this like the same thing only with the case open? Yeah, um, I think this was an earlier iteration. Oh, okay. um, so uh, this was one of the ones they originally used for the, uh, the for the. Uh, the, the New oh, Mexico I see. research. That's a Swami version one. And right, then and then it moves on to the final gotcha. version two. Um, okay. But these were the ones they used originally for the uh, for the ant research that we did with the New oh, Mexico. Okay. Great. Thank you so much for joining me on Smart yeah, no Robots problem. Review. Good luck with your projects, and uh, we'll keep in touch. Okay. Yeah, appreciate it. Thank you. So now you know what a Swami is. <laughs> Excellent. These are pretty exciting developments in technology and robotics that are happening. And a lot of these technologies are driving us into potentially landing uh, and getting people onto Mars and Moon. Very exciting stuff. These technologies are going to be the spearhead. This is, they're going to be the vanguard of these future exploration missions. But anyway, I'd love to hear what you had to say, what your opinion is about the Swamis, what your thoughts were about the show. Please leave all that down below in the comments section. And if you really like the show, please consider clicking the like button. And if you haven't done so already, click the subscribe button. That helps you stay subscribed. And if you click the, the bell button next to the subscribe button, it notifies you when I have new episodes out, which is great, and you won't miss an episode. Also, if you want to support the show further, consider clicking and using one of the Amazon links below. If you shop at Amazon, these links will help me get more robots on the show and provide more content for you guys. Even a toothbrush goes a long way, so consider using those links as well. Until next time, thank you for watching Smart Robots Review.